So cold weather has definitely arrived. It's time for us to get ready for cold weather RV living. So stick around home on the hitch. That's what we're going to talk about today. Got a lot to do, so let's get busy. I hate yard work. All right, welcome back everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, so RVing tends to be spontaneous and spur of the moment a lot of the time. Uh, that is until the temperature drops below freezing. And if you are not prepared for that, it can turn from spontaneous to expensive very quickly. RVing in cold weather, especially temperatures below 30 degrees, takes preparation and planning. So it's less likely to turn into a frozen nightmare. Mm -hmm. And that can happen. So today we're going to go through the things that you should be considering when planning this kind of trip or stay and talk about the things that we have done and the things that we have not done. Um, so let's get into it. Number one is pretty easy. What will the temperatures most likely be where you are planning on going? Uh -huh. Will it be 30 and above always? Will it drop below freezing a few times, but only for a few hours at night? Or will it drop well into the single digits and stay there for days, even weeks on at a time? So knowing what temperature range to expect will make uh, your other choices a lot easier. Uh, so number two, how prepared is your RV for cold weather as it sits stock from the dealer? Now, does it have a cold weather package? Uh, what does that include? Is the underbelly where the storage tanks are located heated by the furnace? Uh, do the water tanks, uh, your water storage tanks have tank heaters in place? Uh, are the windows double paned for a cold uh, weather packages? differ widely throughout the industry and a lot of manufacturers use that term as a selling point only when the RV is really not uh, cold weather ready. Uh, so you really need to know uh, where you're going and how your RV is set up for cold weather camping so you can make the correct choices to uh, prepare. All right, so let's go over the things you might need and the things you might need to do depending upon where you are. We are in the Eastern Tennessee mountains mm -hmm. in an area that is prone to drop below freezing at night. And as the winter months progress, it may stay below freezing for several hours, possibly even several days. Yeah. But we are not in an area where we would expect days or weeks of single digit or sub-zero temperatures. Right. A heated fresh water hose. You need a heated fresh water hose. You can get by without it, but that involves you filling your fresh water tanks every day and disconnecting and draining your water hose every night. That is if the temperature rises above freezing during the day. If not, you'll have to wait until it does rise high enough for you to be able to fill your tanks. The better choice is to have a heated fresh water hose so you don't have to worry about it. There are several options out there. You can buy pre-made hoses for around a hundred bucks or so. Uh, you can also uh, DIY your own for about half of that. Now ours, I made ours, it's a 25 foot drinking water safe hose uh, that has a self-regulating heat cable tape to it and then foam pipe insulation placed over that. So far it's worked quite well for us. Uh, you can also buy heat tapes that are controlled by a thermostat on the plug end of the cord. Uh, when the temperature drops down it triggers the thermostat and turns the cable on. Uh, we actually have both types of cables. Uh, here's a short description on how these cables work and how the self-regulating cable works. Self-regulating heat cable is commonly used for freeze protection of water pipes and drain lines and for protecting roofs and gutters from ice dams. Most self-regulating heating cable is made up of the following components. First, there's a protective outer jacket. Then there's a copper braid that provides additional protection and a positive ground path. Next is the inner flame retardant insulation jacket. And the last layer before we get down to the twin copper bus wires is the conductive core. This is where the self-regulating action occurs. Here's how it works. 
The core is made of a special plastic infused with millions of microscopic conductive electrical cells or pathways. In lower temperatures, the core contracts, causing more of the conductive cells to come in contact with one another, completing the circuit between the two bus wires, in effect turning the core into a resistive heating element. And when the ambient temperature is warmer, the conductive core expands, thus breaking the circuit between the bus wires and decreasing the amount of heat being generated. A big advantage to this design is that in longer runs, where heating cable may be exposed to varying ambient temperatures along the way, self-regulating cable can provide variable heating wherever and whenever it's needed along the entire run. But if you're going to go with the DIY route, make sure that you buy your heat cable about 10 feet longer than your water hose. That way you can wrap it around your water pressure regulator, uh, the water spigot, as well as any exposed piping from the ground. Next up, sewer connection. There are several schools of thought on this. What you go with, again, will depend upon your temperatures and your rig setup. Heat tape. Again, we have opted to wrap our sewer hose in heat tape as well as the exposed end of the plastic sewer pipe from the RV and the gate valve. This will allow us to leave our gray tanks open as we usually do any other time and this should keep the water hose from freezing down to zero degrees. If you don't go this route, then you can just keep your tanks closed and the sewer hose is empty until you're ready to dump the tanks. Just make sure that you protect uh, any exposed gate valves and pipes so that they will drain when you go to dump them. And make sure all the water is drained from the sewer hose after you dump the tanks uh, or you may wake, wake up to a, you know, a block of ice in there where you can't dump your tanks. Uh, as well, do you have an opening in the RV in your water bay uh, where your hoses or wires uh, enter, make sure you plug up around those uh, so the cold doesn't get in. So next up is the underside of your RV. Is it enclosed or is it open? If it is enclosed, then most likely it is heated by a duct from your propane furnace. So the heat from the furnace protects the water lines and tanks. This only works if the furnace is running. RV furnaces use a lot of propane when it's cold outside but more on that later. That's right. If your RV does not have an enclosed underbelly and you're going to be in freezing climates, then you'll most likely need to skirt around the bottom of your RV and place a heater of some type under there to keep everything warm. Uh, you can use many different things to skirt around your RV. You can buy snap-on uh, cloth skirts that go on quickly and, and pack away pretty fast as well, or you can use plywood or insulation board. Uh, does your RV have tank heaters? Some rigs come with tank heaters already installed. If you don't have them, you can buy them aftermarket in uh, many different sizes. It can be a great option to protect your water tank. It's a good idea to be able to monitor temperatures in and around your RV in real time. Wireless thermometers and weather stations can help do this. Mm -hmm. We use a temperature sensor with our Simply Safe alarm, not which is not affiliated. So what it is, I opened up a small area of a rig's enclosed underbelly and installed uh, one of the Simply Safe temperature sensors in between one of our gray tanks and our black tank and then sealed it back up. I also installed a temperature sensor underneath the RV on one of the frame braces to monitor the outside temperature. This way I can see the difference between the two temperatures uh, on the Simply Safe app and see how well the furnace is keeping up with uh, the cold weather outside. If something goes amiss, uh, then the, the system will uh, alert us that uh, the temperature has dropped. If you have some areas or compartments of your rig that you need to protect at night from the cold, some people use a small lamp and incandescent bulb to keep the temperature above freezing. Make sure that it is an incandescent bulb. LED bulbs do not put off much heat at all. That's right. So let's move on to the inside uh, really quick. Make sure you pay attention to where your water pump is uh, and it's protected from the cold and a lot of rigs, the city water uh, at the campground uh, hookup is gonna run through the water pump all the time whether uh, the water pump is being used or not. If it freezes and cracks, uh, it won't be a lot of fun at all. Ours is located in our kitchen island in the center of the RV so it's well protected from the uh, outside temperatures. Uh, so for any night that the temperature is not dropping below 38 or 40 degrees, we use two uh, cool touch non-ceramic uh, heaters, space heaters, to warm the RV. We keep one in the living room and one in the bathroom. 
uh, and they keep everything pretty nice and warm. If the temperature is going to be below 38 degrees, then we use the propane furnace so that the underbelly and the tanks will be heated. We usually set the furnace thermostat that is located in the kitchen on or about 60 or 65 degrees. Then we use a space heater in the bedroom and keep the door closed. That way, the space heater won't affect the temperature in the kitchen and, the, and keep the furnace from coming on and off. The reason we do it this way is that RV furnaces are propane hogs. If you're in a cold climate and just use your furnace for heat, uh, it will chew through your propane faster than you think possible. Uh, so we set the propane furnace uh, to run at like 60 or 65. That keeps the underbelly nice and warm. And then if we need it warmer in our bedroom, we can control that with the space heater. And in case you didn't know, propane tanks only run out in the middle of the night. Some type of law of physics or something, I'm not sure. Make sure you carry an extra propane tank in case of a late night incident. Our two main tanks are 30 pound tanks, but we also carry two 20 pound tanks as a reserve and backup. We can use them while we're getting the 30s filled and they're easy to exchange uh, pretty much anywhere that uh, propane is sold. The propane that is in your tanks is a liquid. When the valve is opened and the pressure is allowed to be released, then it boils into a gas and flows into your appliances. You need to address two things here for cold climates. One, one you need a high flow propane regulator. Uh, and the one that came with your RV is probably not high flow. Uh, the reason this is important is that the colder your propane tanks are, the slower they're gonna boil off into a gas. Thus, less gas will be available for your hungry appliances. So don't let your regulator be a choke point in the system. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to heat your propane tanks uh, if they are not in a heated compartment. Our tanks sit on the front of the RV like most travel trailers. Some people use heating pads or heated throws to keep the tanks warm, but usually those have some sort of safety that cuts them off after a set amount of time. We use carboy heater pads for wineries and breweries. Uh, they supply a nice steady low heat uh, that helps the tanks work better uh, in freezing temperatures. We don't have double pane windows, but we do use thick curtains that work very well at blocking out the heat in the summer and the cold in the winter. So figure out where it is that you're gonna be going. Uh, make sure you take stock of your RV, uh, how prepared it already is from the factory uh, for cold weather RVing or cold weather uh, living in your RV. Uh, that way you can make choices about what you need to do. Do you need to skirt the bottom of your RV? Uh, what kind of heated hose options do you need? Do you have tank heaters? Are you gonna need tank heaters? Uh, do you need to buy extra space heaters? Uh, are you gonna have electric hookups at all? That's, I mean, you might have to be solely relying on propane. If that's gonna be the case, then you're gonna have to you know, have extra tanks and secure a, a good propane source. So we hope these tips will help you if you're thinking about uh, looking at cold weather RV living. So until next time. Take care of each other. Love each other. Make every moment count. See you next time, guys.